Plaintiff Daniel Bratlin started dating the defendant after they met online. But during their courtship, the defendant had Daniel falsely arrested for domestic violence. Daniel insists the only time he hit the defendant was during sex, and he's suing her today for stolen property. Defendant Kristen Schreiber says Daniel was a sex fiend with several fetishes, including bondage. Kristen claims Daniel was abusive both during and after sex, and she's countersuing for storage fees and emotional distress. Start with you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I met Chris in March of 08 on online dating service. Um, at that time, I was in an 18-year relationship with, with an open relationship at that time. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately two months later, Chris was kicked out of her parents' house for neglecting her children. At that time, she asked, you know, she didn't have anywhere to stay, so she stayed with my current girlfriend at the time and, and myself for approximately three months. Were you dating both of them or you were seeing I was, both? I was, I was seeing both of them at that time. Um, Your Honor. But not at the, but not at the same not time. Not at the same time. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I disagree with that. Um, they tried to get me involved in a love triangle mm -hmm. where I would sleep with both of them, and I really had a problem with that. Okay. I have no interest in sleeping with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I've never been with a woman, and I have no desire to be with a woman. He stayed with my current girlfriend at the time and, and myself for approximately three months. Were you dating both of them, or you were seeing I was, both? I was... I was seeing both of them at that time. Oh, Your Honor. But not at the, but not at the same not time. Not at the same time. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Plaintiff Daniel Bradland is suing his ex-girlfriend, who claims Daniel was in the bondage and was extremely abusive during sex. You wanted to say something? State yes, your name. Yes, I'm, I'm Gail Wyant. Mm -hmm. I'm the girlfriend okay. that, they moved, that she moved in with. Okay. The and other part of the triangle. Yeah, I'm the other part of the triangle. <laughs> Um, I disagree with her. It was single. And then she decided that she did not want him seeing me and I had them move out. He did not tell me about her when we first started dating. He told me he was single. How long were you there before you noticed? Um, <laughs> second well, date, Your Honor. Right. I met him and we had gone on one date, and when I returned home from my first date, my mom told me that I was kicked out. And I called him up in desperation. That's not true, Your Honor. Let her finish, go ahead. And asked if I could move in until I could get into a homeless shelter. When I did move in, that's when I found out about his girlfriend and them wanting me to be involved. How long did you stay there after? Uh, about two months. All right. And then we were totally homeless and had to live in his van. When she wanted a re uh, an exclusive relationship mm -hmm. with me, she put you all out. I told her that she wanted an exclusive relationship, and she said, oh, if that's what you want, I'm going to get a smaller apartment, and you'll have to deal with your problems yourself. So she found a smaller apartment, and because we couldn't find an apartment right away because of her felony assault record, we lived homeless in my van for three months. So why'd you run off with her instead of staying with her? <laughs> well, I've been asking myself that question for three years, Your Honor. <laughs> I bet you won't run off again. Uh, anything else you wanted to tell me in terms of background? Well, yes. Um, it was from August 08 until October of 08 that we lived in my van. Mm -hmm. We finally found a single room, and we lived there until September of 09. Okay. That's when we found a regular full one-bedroom apartment. Um, at that time, we hadn't been getting along real well, so we were going to couples therapy. It was in September that I found out that she was sleeping with somebody else. Now, at least when we met, I told her on Please the second tell me date... she wasn't sleeping in your van behind your back. <laughs> she did! Her, her other guy called to find his Prince Albert that he left behind. That's just dirty. Yes, it is, Your Honor. That is 
terrible. He's lying, Your Honor. You never slept with another guy? I never guy slept with another man. Van? Do I? Can I give the phone numbers of some of the guys she slept with in the time we were together? I have several male friends, but I haven't slept with them, excluding my current boyfriend. That's one. Right. <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone. Man. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, in November, she had me arrested and gave a false report that I was domestically abusing her. Mm -hmm. um, Your Honor, I do have the report here, and it was uh, September of 2009. That not was October. the first of the two. So it was twice she reported you? She falsely what had the, me falsely What were arrested. the results? You say falsely. Were you acquitted? The first one, I spent my 48 hours, and they let me go. The second one, I had the dismissal right here, Your Honor. Okay. All right. And so what are you getting to regarding the property? They had a do not. Con she had a do not contact order put on me from the months of or in November of 09 until the dismissal, which was in January. That's when my property went missing. What property? Um, without giving you everything, we're talking video games, uh, paintball gun, jewelry, clothes. Okay, you have a list? Yes, I do. All right. And you say you never hit this woman? Not in anger, Your Honor. <laughs> you want me to be Y'all some sex fiends. <laughs> and you say you never hit this woman? Not in anger, Your Honor. Want me to be honest. Some sex fiends. <laughs> Plaintiff Daniel Bradland is suing his ex-girlfriend, who claims Daniel was into bondage and was extremely abusive during sex. Ma'am, what do you say to uh, these allegations about false arrest charges and the stolen property? Um, I did not know that he was into bondage sex and had so many fetishes when we first met. Um, he placed nipple clamps on me, uh, beat me. I disagree. Um, All right, ma'am, how long were you with him? Uh, we were together approximately two and a half years. Right. And two and a half years, you engaged in all this uh, debauchery. <laughs> that you he was a very to. controlling man. He would threaten and that's me. That's so. You got them clips on. She does make a point. <laughs> she does make and a good point. I guess you would do what he said. That hurts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he had riding crops. He would beat me with. He had whips and cat and nine tails. He inserted foreign objects into me. Oh right. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I didn't know he was into the group sex. Yeah, but ma'am, you went two and a half years. So um, you say because he was controlling. He was. He well, would not allow me. Left and not returned. I he tried many times. You? He did. Where? When I moved back in with my parents, mm -hmm. he came there. Did you all call the police? Yes, we did. And what did they do? They said that I should get a restraining order against him, and, and you I did. did? How long did you wait to do that? Um, I lived in fear for quite a while. But you finally woke up and realized that you could go and get a restraining order? Yeah, about two years. I had so a you two years to realize that you could stop being kinked on and go and <laughs> get a uh, restraining order. Yeah. Anyhow, the stolen property he's suing you for, ma'am. No, um, I did not. Did he ever mention these things to you? Yeah, and I said I don't have them. Did you ever make any uh, independent report of it? I went to the police mm -hmm. department to make a stolen property report, mm -hmm. and the officer I spoke to was the same officer who had me arrested. And when I told him that all this stuff was taken and that she had given the video games to her kids because she told me that, the officer went in back for about 20 minutes, came back and says, well, there's no video games at any of the pawn shops around here. Sorry. Ma'am, did you tell him you allowed your children to play with his? No, I did not. Your counterclaim for $5,000 is for what, ma'am? Storage um, fees and emotional storage distress. Storage fees household. and the emotional distress, yes. Tell me what happened. He was incredibly abusive. He beat me um, three times. 
from September of 09 till October of 09, when I finally decided I had had enough, um, at which point I kicked him out and he took all of his property. Then he began to stalk me. Um, he would come over and throw stones at my window, snowballs, um, anything he could. He would call my current boyfriend on his phone and say, I want Chris back. What is she doing? Why are you? What are the storage fees it? for, man? Um, when we were homeless, his aunt had given him some furniture and he didn't have a job. He didn't have was there an agreement on storage fees. Man? Yes. He what said that he agreement? would pay me back once we moved into the apartment. How much? I have the Let's breakdown. See. Sir, what do you say? I wanted to say that I had that storage unit two years before I met Chris. And when we met, I was in a little bit more financial buying. Did you agree to pay her? No, I did not. She said, if you're having trouble, I can help you with this. As in, she'll, she'll pay for it because she was also putting stuff in my storage unit. Ma'am, did you have items in there? In there? I had Where nothing Where were your items? There. My parents' house. All right. Plus and ma'am, you wanted to say clothes. something? When they moved the rest of his stuff out of my apartment in August of 08, she stated in front of me that she was going to pay for that. Ma That's a lie. See, how do I know who's telling the truth, guys? How should I know? And you have your police reports? Uh, I have them right here, sir. I also have that's a copy part of, of your emotional distress. Report. I also have a copy of her police report, and I've marked some of the stuff that I know were falsities. Okay. Plaintiff Daniel Bradland is suing his ex-girlfriend, who claims Daniel was in the bondage and was extremely abusive during sex. I'm reading one of the police reports that says, the officers observed and photographed the victim's injuries. They saw a large bruise just below the victim's right eye. I would like to tell you that she has a habit of sleeping on her fist. <laughs> and at least, I am not kidding. Now you just hurt yourself. At least with once that a week, she would end up with a bruise. My witness can tell you also because she saw those same bruises she told her, is at least that, five that's why times. Why the case was dismissed? The restraining order. I have the dismissal here, and I have her false Man, report. Man, why was it dismissed? Um, he had begged me to drop the restraining order. Okay. And said Did that she drop the charges? She didn't drop them. The, she told the attorney, mm -hmm. my attorney, yes. and my witness that I never hit her. It was only verbal, and that's when it was and dismissed. So, and you say it's because she sleeps on her hands. That's what the police saw. <laughs> Coincidentally, when she called the police and said you were assaulting and battering her, when they got there, they saw bruises under her eye. And you say, just coincidentally, that had to be the night she was sleeping on her hands. Not coincidentally, Your Honor. Excuse me, Your Honor, but why would a bruise be showing up hours well, later? Well, let me just tell you guys this. One, ma'am, you dropped the charges on the allegations that he assaulted you. Two, you relinquished the restraining order. Three... I don't know who to believe regarding the storage fees or the stolen property. You all have a burden to prove your cases and you must prove that more likely than not, what you're telling is the truth. And I'm not convinced by either of you all's written evidence or verbal testimony. Have a good day. Both your cases are dismissed. everything just to give it to your kids and family and I will see you in court again for the wedding rings because I do have the receipts for those if you didn't want to have a sexual fancy sexual relationship I don't think you'd have bought 20 or 200 dollars worth of sex toys the first time you went out including bondage equipment good luck you know I hope you enjoy being abused because he's very abusive um no he's not he's a very loving man very caring man so what I'm goes just around to be comes around Chris Karma's a b**** <laughs>